Premiere Pro's new automatic object selection tool is here, and today I'm gonna to show you five of my favorite ways to get the most out of this. But if you just wanted a tutorial about how to use it, I've actually already got a video about that, so let's just dive right into my favorite use cases. And the first one is this custom cutout transition. This is an effect you've probably seen in a lot of different iterations, but you're gonna see it a lot more now because the object selection tool makes it so easy to do. To start, duplicate your clip and select your top layer. Select the subject and track them through the scene forward and backward and move the mask to the opacity section. Your scene shouldn't look any different now. But now if you drop the opacity of your bottom clip and then fade it in after the point where you want to start the next shot, you can start to see the effect take shape. Now overlap this shot with the scene that came before it with your subject and the background shot both above the previous clip. And from here, you can keyframe your subject in their position here, and then move to the first frame and animate them in from any direction. And bonus points if you nest this clip first and then use the transform tool. Uncheck use composition shutter angle and set it to about 180 degrees so that you get a realistic motion blur during this animation. And by adding just a couple of sound effects, you can get a transition that feels super custom and premium in just a couple of minutes. Now this next one I'm gonna share is actually my personal favorite, but if you're getting value out of this video already, make sure to hit the like button and let's keep going. The second one is to use use it for simple VFX shots. You actually don't need crazy complicated masks to get really high quality effects. Like for example, this effect of walking between Instagram reels is getting super popular right now. And this used to be something you had to do inside of After Effects, but now in Premiere Pro, all you have to do is have footage of yourself from the top down, either going from top to bottom or bottom to top duplicate this layer on top of itself and leave at least one track in between. On the top layer, use the object mask tool to highlight the subject that you want to cross over this middle section and track forwards and backwards. Then drop the mask down to the opacity section. Now in the middle here is where we're going to add our fake Instagram section. And the easiest way to actually do this is to just screen grab something from your existing Instagram profile and then bring it into Premiere Pro and use the crop features to only leave this section. When I place it down in between these two clips, the effect is already done. If it's not quite perfectly dialed in, you can go into your mask here under effect controls and you can adjust things like the feather or even the offset to really dial it in. Plus bonus points if you can add any text in your Instagram section here that act as an Easter egg or further the story of your video. Next up is Mr. Beast style red green highlights. This one is something that I didn't expect to be as useful as it actually is. Quickly highlighting that something is either good or bad. Mr. Beast does this a lot by highlighting a contestant and either coloring them red or green for a few frames to indicate that they made a good or a bad decision. This helps to increase the overall visual comprehension of your video. And it doesn't have to be for like a complicated game show either. This also works for a simple talking head video or skit. To do this, just cut out the section of your clip that you want this effect to happen for, seven to 15 frames-ish. Then with the object selection tool, highlight your subject and track forwards and backwards. And then instead of moving your mask to the opacity section, leave it and just go into your Lumetri colors panel. Go to your color wheel section and move it to whatever color you want your subject to be highlighted. And without having to move or adjust the mask, your Lumetri color adjustments will automatically get applied to your mask. Next, duplicate this section of your clip on top of itself and delete the mask from the bottom layer and then keyframe the opacity of the top clip to go from zero to 100 and then back down to zero at whatever speed you want. Now you're speaking the language of film, showing something visually rather than just describing it with your words. This is really easy to do with people, but I've also managed to use this effect for organizations. So get creative with it and find some new interesting ways to use it. Next up, the TikTok green screen effect. This one's really simple, but it opens up once you start to use it. The main problem is that TikTok and Instagram's green screen features have a lot of restrictions that make them kind of finicky and difficult to use sometimes. But if you just wanna cut out your subject like we've done for every other one of our tips so far, and then just drag the mask to the opacity section, now you can place B-roll of whatever it is that they're talking about oh, behind God. them. And this basically just recreates the TikTok green screen effect, but with the added benefit of being able to edit anything after the fact. And it's not just for vertical short forms either. Content creators like Nakey Jakey have used this exact style only with a green screen. And this now basically allows you to recreate that exact style way faster. But here's a question. What happens when you want to add multiple masks on top of each other? Well, it's actually really easy. If you wanted to add more masks, you can either click on new sections, but if you wanted to add different kinds of masks, either the ellipse or the square or the pen masking tool, you can do that by just clicking and holding down the object mask button and selecting from the drop down here. All of these can be added and moved around and then tracked in the same way as before. They'll show up as a new unique mask that needs to be uniquely tracked, but you can even highlight them all together by holding control or command and clicking on multiple of them and drag all of them to new locations or make quick adjustments. One example of how I use this a lot is if I'm masking a subject that has a table in front of them, which is staying in the exact same position of frame the entire time and the camera isn't moving. Then I don't even have to track this mask. I'll just use the pen tool and add the selection here. And when I drag both of these to the opacity section, 
section, they both work together to mask out exactly what I want. And my quick suggestion is that if you wanted to invert some of these masks to get them to cut out something rather to include something, if you're using multiple masks, don't use the invert checkbox. Instead, go to the blend mode and select subtract from both or all of them. The invert checkbox is great for quick changes on single masks, but it gets really wonky and complicated when you try to use it with multiple masks present. You can see that if I want to make these masks remove this subject instead, inverting both actually doesn't work. I need to change both to subtract. And one quick bonus tip, once you have your subject masked, one of the easiest effects to pull off now is just to duplicate this clip on top of itself. And for each of these clips underneath the top layer, you can move around your position to showcase that you've already created a high quality clone effect. And if you found all this helpful, check out this video for even more Premiere Pro tips.